Hello everybody and welcome to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make this sick clone and stylized transition effect inside DaVinci Resolve using Fusion, the color tab, and every other tool that we have in here. So let's go ahead and get started. What I got here is a clip from Travis Scott's music video, Can't Say, and why don't we kind of spice it up a little bit. There's a lot of cool effects and stuff in this music video, but let's go ahead and add the transition right here in this clip that I've made. Now essentially all this effect is, is you want to cut out and mask out your object that you want to isolate, and then you just basically add a ton of motion blur to the background and slide it around with a little bit of tiling, and you got a really cool effect. So let me show you how it's done. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt and duplicate this layer. That way we're going to have this layer is going to be Travis Scott cut out and masked and the second layer will be our background that we're going to animate to slide around. Now since we're going to be moving in and out of different tabs, I'm going to go ahead and color coat these. Um, usually inside DaVinci, green tends to stand for the foreground and uh, uh, I don't know, yellow tends to stand for the background so I'm gonna color coat those so I can see those colors in the other tabs then once we do that we're just gonna click on that and go ahead and create a new fusion clip so that'll put them together in their own little fusion timeline alright so let's go ahead and take this into fusion and start messing around with it alright so once we get in here before we get too confused like I said green is associated with the foreground and yellow is kinda just the main streamline in so essentially that's our background so let's go ahead and press F2 to rename these. So I'm gonna name this Travis because that's what we're gonna, we're gonna cut him out and that's what layer this node is. And this node will be, let's press F2 again to rename it to base. Or uh, let's, let's click BG for background. Uh, that way we know what we're working with. All right, so let's start by animating the background. So let's click on that node here, press two, that way it shows up here. Um, and basically let's press shift spacebar and let's add a transform node. So there's a transform, um, and let's just drag this in right there and line everything up how we want. And what I want to do is I'm going to animate this. Basically, I'm going to go halfway through. That's where I want everything to come to a standstill. And I'm going to go ahead and key the center, all right? Then I'm going to go to the beginning of our clip. And basically, before I move anything, go ahead and change the edges to mirror. That way, it's going to mirror the edges like this when we start moving it. And I'm not seeing anything, uh, why? Oh, because I need to press two on my transform node, that way we can visualize that. And just in case you don't know, pressing two or one on your keyboard will basically show you what the selected node looks like. So right now we're just working with transform one, so I've pressed two, that way it shows up here so we can just see what it looks like. Now let's continue dragging this over the center just a few times. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it this way a few times, maybe like one, let's see. We'll go like three, so if I go ahead and play that through now, there we go, now it kind of slides through. Um, maybe I might drag this out just a little bit further, um, like uh, one more, one more frame roughly, and go ahead and if I play that, now it's just a little bit faster, I like that. Um, now if you know me, I love smooth transitions, so let's go ahead into our spline editor. Uh, I'm gonna move this up so we have a little bit more room. Click on our transform and let's kinda, let's see, let's zoom out here. Um, I want to give this a really smooth transition. So I'm going to leave the front uh, linear, the first keyframe, but I'm going to right click on this and click smooth and probably hold down alt and drag this out so it's even smoother. So now if we play this through again, you'll see that it comes to a nice smooth halt at the end. All right, so that's looking all good. Last thing that we have to do is add a blur to it, but we're going to do that last because that will take up a lot of valuable rendering CPU power. What we'll do before that is why don't we go ahead and now cut out Travis. That way he actually sticks out from the background. Now of course you can use various paint masks and all sorts of different things inside of the fusion tab here. However, I like how streamlined all the masking tools in the color page are, so we're gonna do that instead. If you go back to the edit page here, you'll notice that if we right click and open our fusion clip in the timeline, here you'll see the two clips that we separated in the beginning of the video. So now from here we can go ahead and edit this clip in the color tab. So here we are in the color tab, uh, make sure that I have my green one selected uh, because I had everything color coded and let's start cutting this out. Let's go over to our mask page. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go on the curve here and I'm just gonna go ahead and draw out a very rough mask. 
of his head. There we go, it's super rough, but it'll work for what we're doing. And just in case you're wondering, I personally like to mask out each individual part of someone's body when I'm masking because that speeds up your workflow a lot instead of trying to basically mess with one huge messy mask. All right, so once I have that masked out, I like to go over to my tracker to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Now, overall, my method is to go over to the frame tab, the clip tab, basically any adjustments that you make to your mask is going to affect the mask animation for the entire clip. However, you go to the frame tab, that's essentially like individual keyframes. Um, so basically what I like to do is I will track forward one frame at a time and just manually adjust basically each frame. So right now everything looks fine, the tracker's handling it okay, but as soon as things start to get a little bit messy, like right around here, I'll usually add a keyframe and basically sort of manually adjust the mask. It's sort of a hybrid between uh, automating it and also manually masking. So I'm just gonna keep tracking forward. Right now when it's going over his hand, it can be a little bit messy because we are masking his hand out as well. But right there, as you can see, um, now, now we have keyframes starting to form because I keep moving things. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of tuck everything back into the head. And let's move this around, put this up there. And this takes time. This is a very rough estimate just because of the tutorial. We don't wanna be wasting too much time here. We wanna to get to the more educational part of all this. Now, as I'm tracking here, I can click on interactive mode and this will show all the track points here. And what I can do is the hand is messing up the tracking a lot. So I can actually just go ahead and click and drag all the track points on his hand and then delete them right here and that will essentially delete the track points. So when I track forward, you will see that basically those track points are no longer in his hand, so his hand's not messing up the track anymore, which will basically help us save a lot of time. Now, as his hand starts to disappear, um, what we can do is go ahead and add some of those track points back. So just click uh, this button to set points, and, and well, it didn't read anything there because his face is pretty much flat without any thing to track. Now the last thing to note, you don't have to do every single frame. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and like skip ahead three frames and just drag this over. And it will, if you're on the frame tab and you have a keyframe inserted here and here, uh, it will go ahead and just track between the two. So if I go ahead and just move it, you'll see that it just basically keyframes between those two separate keyframes. Now these are all very different methods that you can use to mask, so I'm just explaining a bunch of different ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this track using whatever works best for me. All right, so I've gone ahead and tracked through the entire head. Like I said, this is a super rough mask just for the sake of the tutorial and time. Um, but let's go ahead and clean this up now. So the last thing I wanna do is go back over to our mask tab, click on the one that we have just animated, and let's kind of basically bring up the softness a little bit. Uh, and by the way, click this button to reveal basically the, the mask. Um, and let's kind of bring this inside. I wanna clip, I wanna clip a lot of the inside here. Um, and just kind of bring it like that and way too much softness. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna click on the curve tool again to create a new mask and I'm just gonna make another new mask around his arm and essentially I'm going to continue the process for each part of his body. So I'm gonna go ahead and slave away miserably for a few minutes here and track everything through. Uh, so you guys do the same, yes. All right, guys, I have gone ahead and finished a really, really messy mask. Like I said, make sure you spend a little more time on it than I did. Uh, might go back and touch it up a little bit. Uh, but once we have this, uh, we want to, of course, get our alpha output out of here. So we're going to right click, add an alpha output, and just drag that 
and connect those two nodes. So now we have our alpha mask working. Let's go back to the edit page here. Now this was our fusion clip here, but let's go back to our original timeline where we have our fusion clip connected here. This is the fusion clip that we want to edit. And as you can see, it's already starting to come together. Let's go ahead and open it up inside of fusion. So if we play this through, this is the layer that we just edited inside the color page. So now since it is merged on top, you can see that he is actually separated from the bottom layer. And boy, I do not like that mask. I'm gonna go touch that up a little bit more. All right, there we go. I opened up the mask on his head a little bit better. And as you can see, it's looking really sick right now. But the last thing that we wanna do, of course, is add in our motion blur. So let's go ahead and click on our transform node and click on settings, go down to motion blur and select that. You're gonna wanna crank up the quality a lot more and possibly measure with mess with the shutter angle a little bit just to kind of see what different uh, sort of effects you can get from it. I'm gonna bring it, uh, I'm gonna, let's keep it 195. And as you can see, there we have an awesome transition effect. And as you can see, now we have this awesome cloning effect that you can kind of open the clip on. Now there's a few different things that you can do to kind of stylize this more. Go ahead and click on your Travis node, shift spacebar, and let's add a duplicate, duplicate right there. Um, now after you add the duplicate, let's go ahead and create uh, two, four, about four copies. Then let's move to roughly right here where everything kind of comes together and just a few frames before uh, everything comes to a halt. Let's set a keyframe for the number of copies, time offset, and the center. All right, so set all those keyframes. Then let's go to the beginning of the clip and set keyframes there, there, and there as well. And then let's go into the middle. And now let's go ahead and pull out the center a little bit so there's an offset uh check merge under that way it goes uh, it stacks underneath him rather than on top of him and then let's offset the time so we get a little bit of wave and cool distortion with these copies here so after doing a little keyframe work there you can see that there's a little time offset has a cool little wave to it play it through and bam, we have an awesome sick transition right there. You got a lot of echoes and they all kind of merge together to create your clip. And that's how it's done guys. You kind of have your echo come together and it all merges into one clip. Now from here, you have endless possibilities. You can basically do this in the middle of a clip rather than just in the beginning. You can animate it so things come from different directions as well. Um, I like to add a little bit of a flash here using one of our packs from Cinepax. Um, which pack was I using earlier? It was the Scratch FX pack. Now, if you guys haven't checked out this pack on Cinepax.com, go give it a quick look. There's also a sample pack to mess around if you want to basically try to replicate one of the effects here. But basically, I grabbed Scratch's light and I dragged it right in between the background. That way, we can add a little scratches to the blurring background. And what we wanna change the composite mode to is screen, I believe. And as you can see, that will give us a little bit of static in the background, but also there are these cool scratches that pop up, um, as you can see right here and some other areas. Now, the cool thing is this white flash here that is also in our scratch footage here that we just applied. So I'm gonna go ahead, click on this media, click F2 to rename it to scratch over overlay and now that that's renamed we can go into our keyframe editor find it scratch overlay and why don't we basically try to get this flash to line up right when he comes together all the different layers of him merge and if we slide this layer over a little bit right there perfect so now if we play this through when all the layers come together it all flashes and really makes a cool effect and we have this awesome static that goes behind him as well and just like that you have a really sick effect all right another cool thing that you can do is go ahead we can delete this duplicate node here and if you wanted to you could kind of animate him coming in from both directions so as you see right here why don't we go ahead and come to the keyframe where everything comes to a halt which is right here. And let's go ahead and add a transform node. Transform. All right, cool. And let's zoom in here. Do, do, do. And then why don't we just copy and paste this node here. And we can basically just kind of merge them in a few separate times. So why don't we just kind of 
stack them so we have a little bit of organization here. Go like that and that and that. So actually I forgot to keyframe these. So let me go ahead and click on each of these and keyframe the center. And here's the second one, keyframe the center. Now we'll go to the beginning and all we gotta do is click on each of these transform. We'll drag one this direction and the other one this direction. So now if we play that through, you have them come from d both directions and all slide together. So as you can see, the possibilities here are kind of endless once you just start moving everything around. All it is essentially is just a heavily blurred background just sliding around with whatever object or person you want to isolate in the front and just animate him around. So that about wraps it up guys. I hope you had a lot of fun making these cool videos and I hope that you can edit them around and create a huge variety of different things. I know I used the scratch effect from cinepacks.com in this video a little bit so if you guys want to go check any of those packs out or any other packs from Cinepax, go ahead and use sample15. It's a promo code that will give you 15% off any of your purchases from our website. A lot of great stuff for editors. So I hope you guys found this helpful and as always have a great time in Resolve. Bye. Thank you.